Good morning. Happy to see all of you here. Beautiful Lord's Day morning. Grateful for the opportunity to come together on this uh, first Sunday of the month of August. And uh, so we begin the eighth month of the year this month and continue to make our way uh, through it, continue to make the most of it. And we're so happy that you are here, ready for Bible class. Of course, we have our uh, college class in the front part of the annex. And we have our ladies class in the back part of the annex. If any of you ladies, I know we have some visitors. If you would like to attend that class, you're welcome to do so. And uh, we have a lot of visitors with us already this morning, perhaps more a little later. And, uh, but it's that time of the year as uh, uh, school's re getting ready to begin and college as well. And uh, we're grateful for some who are visiting our way who will be going to UNA and uh, certainly send you a warm welcome to Wood Avenue. And we are uh, so grateful for uh, the other classes in the annex upstairs and the teachers who are teaching those classes. And to you for having your children and your grandchildren here, um, it's always so important. And uh, so we are, we are indeed grateful to be able to, uh, to be together this morning. We'll have our study in just a moment. Um, the apostles will likely finish our study of Philip today. I do not have handouts uh, on the table from Philip because we just have a few points to mention about him. And then we'll go into Bartholomew. Bartholomew is uh, on the tables out front. If you did not get a handout and you would like to get one of uh, Bartholomew, it, uh, they are out front on the tables, and you're welcome to get one at, the, at this time. But before, um, before we have our study, uh, let's have our prayer. And um, we want to certainly continue to remember uh, Jerry Zeals uh, in our prayers. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Charles. Sure, sure. Thank you, Charles, for that prayer request. Absolutely. The, those who are lost and the, the, the helpless and the hungry and the armed forces, appreciate Charles and his kind heart. And always remembering them. Any, any other prayer requests this morning? Okay, let's begin with prayer. <clears throat> Our God and Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the opportunity to come together to study your word. And we pray that we'll please you and glorify you through the the efforts of our Bible class and the other classes. We're thankful for all of our teachers and the classes that we're able to offer. We're thankful for all who are here, who have a desire to, to be here at this hour and to study your word, to encourage one another through, uh, through their presence and through fellowship. Father, we're grateful for those who are our guests this morning, who have come our way to be with us today. We're always encouraged to meet your children who live in other locations, and uh, we pray that we can encourage them as well. Heavenly Father, we pray for uh, our brother Jerry Zills. We pray that all will go well with his recovery. And we ask your blessings to be upon his family at this time. We pray for the lost. And we pray for uh, those who are, uh, uh, who are without at this time. We ask your blessings to be upon them. But please be with those who are seeking for truth. and Help them to find it. Help us to find them. May we always do what we can do each and every day to seek and uh, the lost and help them to learn what they need to do about salvation. Father, we continue to pray for those who are protecting our lands and this world, and whether they're at home or overseas, we ask your, uh, your, your, your blessings, your mercies to be upon them and their safety. We're thankful for uh, their sacrifices, their efforts. We're mindful of their families. We know uh, that in, in these areas, uh, uh, separation from family at, at times of uh, going to to serve, we, we know that it's, uh, it's difficult and challenging. We pray for their families as well. Pray that there could be peace in Ukraine, peace in that nation, peace around the world. Pray that those who are in a position to cause it, promote it, will do so. Help we as your children to do our part to spread the peaceful news of Christianity throughout the world. Thank you, Father, for your love and your blessings and all that you do for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I mentioned, we are um, studying uh, that of um, the apostles. We've looked at the introduction. We've looked at Peter and Andrew and James and John. Uh, we're now looking at Philip, the apostle Philip. Um, uh, just a few uh, reminders about Philip uh, and the apostles. One, this Philip, who was the apostle, uh, was not the same Philip that you read about in the book of Acts. 
Okay, that one, we usually refer to him as Philip the Evangelist because in Acts chapter 21 and verse 8, he is called uh, an evangelist. It looks like we're about to gain a class, maybe. That or a walkout. There's a lot of ladies walking this way, so let's, let's give them a, just a moment to come, uh, come, come in here. you and uh, thank you ladies for joining us um, today uh, we're uh, sorry that uh, your class was you were not able to have your class today but um, and that you have to sit here and listen to me but uh, maybe uh, maybe that'll that will be able to make it through so we're studying the apostles and we're going to likely wrap up Philip today just a few reminders um, about the apostles there are 12 of course this, we're studying the 12 that our Lord selected in his earthly ministry we're not considering Matthias or, or Paul uh, in this study, just the 12 that our Lord selected. And we mentioned how there are four times that these 12 men are listed together in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then in the, also in the book of Acts, which was written uh, by Luke. And how the, the names um, will kind of the, change from time to time within each group. So the first four are always the first four. Uh, Peter... Andrew, James, and John. The second four are always the second four. <clears throat> the third four are always the third four in your list of 12. And the only thing that remains the same in each list is the lead man for each list. And uh, it was Peter in the first group. And it's our man that we're studying uh, today that we're going to uh, uh, finish our study with him today. Uh, Philip was always the lead man in the second group. The second group of four, it was always Philip. Now we, of course, would know more about the first four, the most about Peter, Andrew, uh, Peter, James, and John. Andrew, we don't know as much about him as the other three. But now as we continue to make our way down, you know, the Bible is going to give us not as much information. There's going to be a, a little less and a little less um, with, with these apostles until we get to Judas Iscariot, the last one that we'll study, the, uh, the betrayer. As I mentioned, this Philip that we're studying today, the one that we're looking at today, he is not Philip that you read about in the book of Acts. It's important, of course, when looking at these names to, to try to make sure that we're not uh, uh, taking two different people and considering them as the same person. Um, you know, that, that can happen with James, if we're not careful, the apostle James, uh, because um, uh, there are other men in the Bible named James. Well, it's probably not as likely to happen with Philip, uh, most likely, if you mention Philip, you're probably going to think about Philip in the book of Acts instead of Philip the Apostle. Um, that's, I, that's what I would think, at least, because we, we study the book of Acts as often as we do. So this Philip, the Apostle, uh, was not the same Philip. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, just again, a, a, a recap of some of the things that we talked about. Uh, he was from the same uh, hometown as uh, Peter and Andrew. Uh, he was likely a fisherman. Uh, he was uh, from Bethsaida, which was on the Sea of Galilee. He was likely a fisherman. Uh, we see that um, Jesus called Philip to follow him in John chapter 1. I think it's interesting uh, to notice that John is the only gospel writer that does not give us a list of the apostles. But up to this point, we relied on John probably more than the other three to give information about the apostles. So I think that's uh, interesting. So if you have your notes from last week, again, I know there are a lot of you now who were not here last week, and I provided handouts on Bartholomew, but um, uh, we're wrapping up Philip first. So if you still have your handout from last week on Philip, we're at the last point, Philip's example to model. If you want to go ahead and open your Bible to John chapter 1. John uh, chapter 1, uh, we're going to be in verse 45. Just a few thoughts on Philip's uh, example to model. One, he followed Jesus. I mean, that's the greatest example that we can follow, is it not? A, a follower of God. He followed Jesus. In verse 43, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, 
follow me. And uh, so he became a follower of Jesus. Next, he brought other people to Jesus. We noticed this about Andrew. It was uh, Andrew who um, came to the Lord first, and then he went and found his own brother Peter to do the same, or Simon. Um, but uh, he brought other people to Jesus. In John chapter 1, in verse 44, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So that Nathanael, he will, will transition into him uh, when we conclude Philip. But uh, Philip first followed Jesus. You can't bring other people to the Lord unless we're following him. Uh, but he also brought other people to Jesus. He went and found Nathanael and said, we found him. Also from verse 45, he um, knew the word of God. In John chapter 1 and verse 45, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. He knew it. He knew the word of God. He, he knew the law that Moses gave. He knew about the prophets. That, that means he was a student of the Word of God. Whenever I um, listen to a preacher, and, and you know, we've had some great preachers on our summer series this year. We have Kyle Buck coming uh, this Wednesday night to close us out. This will be our last one. We had Eric Lyons last week, Alan Webster the week before. Uh, Brian was with us. Had so, so many this year handling this uh, subject of difficult questions answered. And I always... And first reminded that they're students of the word, the, the, these men. And, and, and ladies who are teaching as well in ladies' classes and ladies' days. You know, they're students of the word. You, you have, to, you, you have to, to know it first. You have to apply it to your own life. You have to obey God before you can then teach it to others. Some of the, some of the older preachers used to always say, you preach from the overflow. Meaning being a student. Study, study, study. And, and, and then, then the, the sermons are there. The sermons are there. You know, one should never really have to search for a sermon. You know, we study, 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 and the sermons are there. Well, that's true for all of us in knowing the Word of God. We see Philip's example as one who knew the Word of God. He knew the law of Moses. He knew the prophets. And uh, we, we need to make sure that we are students of the Bible. A few questions or thoughts that I had under that point. Why were these men selected by Jesus? Now, as a reminder, in John chapter 1, this is not the selection of the apostles. This is where they first become followers of Jesus. Okay. Later, uh, in, in Jesus will call them out to be his apostles. But right now, they're just becoming followers of his. But think with me on why were these men selected by Jesus? And you might have some thoughts on that, and I'll be happy to hear them, but let me remind you something that we've been saying nearly every week. The idea that the world wants us to, to, to come away with about these apostles and many people in the Bible, the picture would be these, 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 these great men who reached a level that is impossible to reach today. One thing you've heard me say over and over today, sometimes in books that we read, sometimes pictures that we see where people try to give us an idea of what maybe they look like. Or sometimes, again, even in our stained glass windows that you see in church buildings driving down the road, you get this idea of people who they were not. Four of them we know were fishermen. Likely seven were professional fishermen. You know, the, the, these, these people did not look like the picture that probably most of us have when we think of the apostles. And um, not only that, when we get to Acts 1, and we may get there a little later today when we transition into Nathaniel, um, you know, they even said, are these not Galileans? What they're saying is, You're, they, these are the uneducated people. Look, think about the region they're from. Think about that. They're just, how are they able to do this? Uh, you see, Acts, actually, Acts chapter 2, I should say. But with that, why were these men selected by Jesus? I, I think it goes back to this point, verse 45. We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote. They knew the, God. They knew the word of God. They knew God. They were searching for truth. They were seeking truth. They were searching, always searching for the Messiah at that time. 
They, they, were, they were people of great faith, faith that's shaky from time to time, but that's how faith is. The Word of God builds your faith. It, so then, you know, uh, it, that's how we get our faith, Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So I think it's important that we realize these men were selected because their, their knowledge, their desire to be students of the Bible and their faith in God. Let me mention this. Why was it so easy for Philip to follow Jesus? He was searching for him. He was, he was searching for him. He, it's possible that he was, too was a disciple of John the Baptist, which you read about in the previous verses here in John chapter 1. Always searching for truth. Um, and that's just something I think about when I read John chapter 1 and verse 45. Any thoughts or comments on that, on um, Philip and the other men like him who would eventually be selected as apostles, being students of the word and that kind of being the, the qualification, really? Okay, notice next in your notes, uh, another thought that, my opinion, I realize that, but something I wanted to jot down. I'm convinced that we bring some of life's struggles, troubles, worries, doubts, and fears upon ourselves because we do not always know the Word of God as well as we should. I, th I think that, I think that is, was true then. I think that's true today. I think you find that true in the lives of the apostles as they're getting near the end of our Lord's earthly ministry, near the end of the crucifixion, and even after the crucifixion in Acts chapter 1. You know, some of the things they were struggling with was, could have been solved with a proper understanding of the Word of God. I think we might do the same today. Uh, sometimes maybe we, we worry about things or we, we, we struggle with things. Uh, we question things. Things bother us and the answers are there. You remember Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4, before Jesus ever answered the question about divorce and remarriage, he said, have you not read to the people who should have known God's Word as well as anybody? And he's, I mean, he's rebuking them right there. He's like, look, you should know this. Have you not read? And um, the answers are there. The answers are there. And so I, I think sometimes, you know, we, we bring at least additional problems, struggles, and troubles in because we're not students of the Word like Philip was. Because, because we don't always know it as, as well as we should. And I think that's just something that, I, that uh, is important to point out from verse uh, 45. The last point I have on your notes, with three words, Philip teaches us a valuable lesson in teaching people about Jesus. In John chapter 1 and verse 46, and when the pre, verse 45, Philip goes to Nathaniel. In verse 46, Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Three words in the English language. Come and see. There's a, there's a great lesson right there when it comes to evangelism. And when it comes to teaching other people about Jesus, you've heard me say many times in our Lord's life, quite often he wouldn't go into great detail, at least in the beginning of a conversation. He might would ask a question. You know, they'd ask him a question and he would ask a question to make them think. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to think about things. What, what does... What does Philip say to Nathaniel? He doesn't reason with them. He doesn't, he, he, he doesn't there, there's a time for that. He doesn't try to tell them everything. There's a time for that. He just simply says, come and see. Come and see. Come, come and find out for yourself. That's what we're trying to do. You can't live on my faith. I can't live on your faith. But we can, we can guide people to the scriptures that will help them to develop their own faith. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to, trying to help people to see the importance of getting into the Word and staying in the Word and, and, and not leaving the Word. It's one thing to know enough to become a Christian, but that's just the beginning of it. And then you must continue as a Christian and continue as a student of the Word of God for, uh, for all of life. So that's all I have on Philip. Again, that's, today is uh, kind of, we, we've already studied his life for the previous two weeks, so uh, we have just a little left over in his life. But uh, any thoughts or comments about Philip uh, before we, uh, we move on to uh, Nathaniel? Okay, so if you have your hand out, 
that are on the tables again in the back. Bartholomew or Nathaniel. In the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 47, Jesus said, uh, saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no uh, deceit. Of course, we'll talk a little bit about that as, we, as our study uh, will progress. The only time you read the name Bartholomew in the Bible is when he is listed with a group of 12 apostles. So you're only going to read it um, four times uh, in the Bible. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke all record him second after Philip. So remember we said that your first four are always your first four, your second four are always your second four, and your third four are always your third four out of your 12 apostles. The lead man is always a lead man in all four lists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts. But the other three, they're sometimes rearranged. The other three, uh, some, um, they're not always in the same order. So Matthew chapter 10, verses 2 and 3 Mark chapter 3, verses 14 through 18, and Luke chapter 6, verses 13 through 14, uh, have Bartholomew listed second after Philip. In the book of Acts, which again was written by Luke, Luke records Bartholomew third in the second group of four apostles. So he, he um, I think he includes, I think he lists Thomas first. Let me double check. Acts chapter 1 in the verse 13. Book of Acts chapter 1. In verse 13, when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew. So in this writing, Luke changes the order and will list uh, Thomas before. And he does that in the first grouping as well. Luke makes a change from his gospel, from the book of Luke, to the book of Acts. He makes a change in the order. Um, so, but again, if we're thinking about Bartholomew, you'd only, you're only going to read his name four times, and that is the, the times that he's listed with the apostles in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts. Uh, John, as I mentioned earlier, is the only writer of the four Gospels to not give a detailed list of the apostles. Um, he, he does not do that as the others do. But in the book of John, Bartholomew is likely Nathaniel, and you're only going to read about him twice in the book of John. Go to John chapter 1 once again. John chapter 1. So as you remember, John the baptizer is doing his work. Uh, in verse 35, he has two of his disciples with him. He uh, recognizes Jesus as the Lamb of God. Those two disciples begin following Jesus. As we know, Andrew is named, and John is... Uh, the unnamed disciple there that begins following uh, Jesus. Uh, you get down to uh, verses 41 and 42. You have Peter, 40 through 42. Peter coming to become a follower of Jesus. The verses we just looked at, Philip, our Lord finds Philip, says to him, follow me. And then verse 45, this man named Nathaniel. John chapter 1 in verse 45 beginning, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael's response, we'll talk a little bit about this in verse 46, said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And that's when Philip said, as we discussed just a moment ago, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Nathaniel said to him, how do you know me? Now I want you to think about this for just a moment because this isn't in your notes. But this is Nathaniel's first time to meet Jesus. And, and again, I think as we study the Bible, it's, it's important as we go through this to, to try to place yourself in that time as one of these men. I, I mean, what if... What if this were you? You you were an Israelite. You were a student of the law. Clearly, he is as well because that's how Philip approached Nathaniel. It, Moses talks about him. The prophets talk. We think we found so. So Nathaniel would have understood what Philip was talking about. They they were both students of the Word of God, and so you know here you are a student of the Word of God. You know the Messiah has not yet come into the world or you don't know about him coming into the world, 
you don't realize, you know, there's that this by this time that Jesus, of course, is the Messiah. Jesus is just now really beginning to reveal himself uh, to the people. John the Baptizer, his cousin, is paving the way as a forerunner for him, and this is the beginning of his this ministry that where, where Jesus will become known. You probably would have had reason to ask questions like Nathaniel. I mean, if, if you were living in that day and time, and, 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 and maybe, maybe your close friend, maybe a, 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 a business partner, maybe, maybe a partner in the fishing business comes to you and says, we found them. We found, I mean, maybe it's always on your mind, but do you really think that today's a day that somebody's going to say, oh, hey, the, the Savior of the world is here. He's among us. The way I think about it is when the Lord returns to judge the world. We know it's going to happen. The scripture talks about it throughout. We all believe it's going to happen. But likely you, and it could happen today, but likely you did not spend your morning thinking, today's probably the day. And that's been on your mind. You're still living life. You know, you're just living life. Always being prepared for that day, but still living life. And I think that's what Nathaniel's doing. I think Nathaniel's living life as a student of the Word of God, a student of Moses and the law and the prophets. And then all of a sudden your friend comes and says, we found them. And I think Nathaniel's, you know, we'll talk about his response by saying, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But his response when he meets Jesus is, how do you know me? I mean, that's, that's a fair question. You know, you, have, have we ever met? <laughs> Do you, do you know who I am? And when you think about what's going on at that time, um, Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. That tells us a little more about Nathaniel uh, being a student of the Word of God that we'll discuss throughout our studies. He's looking for the Son of God that the prophets prophesied about. Moses, that's what Philip said. We found him whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote. The prophets talked about Jesus as being the son of God. And the prophets talked about Jesus as being the king of Israel. He knew the Bible. He knew the word of God. He knew the law. Okay? I, again, I just, we cannot stress that enough regardless of what the Bible subject is. We need to be people of the book. We need to be people of the word of God. I've, I've had many people, sincere people, come with their views, their ideas on salvation or worship or any other list of subject, but yet can't get, get book, chapter, and verse to defend why they believe what they believe. I'm not claiming I, I'm a know-it-all at all. But when it comes, especially to these basics, how many times have I heard someone say, well, I don't think this, or I don't think that, or I believe this, or I believe that. So, well, this, well, show me. No, where it is, it's just what I believe, it's just what I feel. You gotta be students of the Word of God. Nathaniel was a student because he was looking for the Son of God, he was looking for the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. He said to him in verse 51, Most assuredly I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending. Upon the Son of Man. So, again, when it comes to Bartholomew, we're only going to read it. We do not read that name in the book of John. You only read it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts. Only with the list of the apostles. But in John, you read about this man named Nathaniel. And we're going to see in just a moment in John chapter 21, only twice do we read about this man Nathaniel. So as I've been saying, as we continue on in our apostles, Philip took us, what, a month? I, th I mean, Peter month, I think maybe we were on Peter for about four weeks. Uh, John maybe was four weeks as well. But, you know, we're just going to going to be less information as we continue on. And Nathaniel, we're going to read about him twice outside of the list that Matthew, Mark, and Luke gives us. Once here in John 1, another time in John chapter 21. But yet there's a lot to learn about him. There's a lot to know about this man. So Nathaniel becomes a follower uh, of the Lord. Uh, as a student, notice Nathaniel's personal life. Go to John chapter 21, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. John chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. 
So this is uh, a passage, again, that we've looked at. I, I, I'll re repeat this. I, in, in the studies, however long we've been studying the, the apostles now for a few months, um, I found it interesting in how often up to this point we've relied on John's gospel for information about these men, and he's the one who does not list the men. I just I find that interesting. I don't know that there's anything to it. I just, I just find it interesting. But after our Lord's death, burial, and resurrection, as you know, he appeared um, uh, to, to, to them uh, back in John chapter 20. But in chapter 21, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee. The sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples were together. So we mentioned in this one verse, John 2, this is as close, as far as I know, this is as close as John uh, gets to giving us a list, and he lists seven of the twelve. And these, although two of them were not named, it's very likely that these seven were seven of the first eight, and Matthew being the one not mentioned in this group. And again, it's possible from this verse that those seven were all professional fishermen. You know four of them were for sure. It's possible all seven were. But this is only the only other time that we're going to read about Nathaniel. And that uh, John tells us where he was from. Cana and Galilee. I think it's, um, I think he put John 1. I think he take the very first chapter of the book of John, John 1, and what he says about Nathaniel. And then you take the very last chapter of the book of John, John chapter 21, and you can put it together as we're going to see in just a moment. John lets us know out here at the end of the book that he's from Cana. But at the beginning of the book is Nathaniel from Cana who says, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? There's something to that, I believe. You might want to look at your map in the back of your Bible. See how uh, close those two locations were to one another. If you want to check out uh, your maps uh, in, your, in your Bible. So, he was from uh, Cana of Galilee, as we see in John chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. Uh, this is the same place where Jesus prefer, performed his uh, first miracle. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, when he turned the water to wine. And as I just mentioned, Cana was located near Nazareth. I should have put a picture up on the, uh, on the screen, but I didn't. But uh, if, you, if you look at your Bible maps, um, especially you know, one of uh, uh, maybe the... If you have one that says, you know, uh, the Holy Land's in our Lord's time or something like that, however it might be worded, um, you'll see that they, are, they were close. I'm not exactly sure uh, how far they were from one another, but they were, they were extremely close to each other. As I mentioned, he was, um, he was likely a fisherman because we see him uh, going fishing in John chapter 21 and verse 2 with Peter and the others. In verse 3, Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we're going with you also. They went out immediately and got into the boat that night, and they caught nothing. Something we've mentioned a couple of times in these classes, but we have a lot in here who are not normally in the class and some uh, visitors as well. You know, it's, it's, it's possible here that Peter and these others, they're just, they're just needing a way to, they're just, they're just needing a way to get away. They're just needing a time to get away. Um, going back to what they know, fishermen, fishing, going back, you know, what they know, what they need, what, how they can clear their minds, Think about all that they've been through in the last few days. And it's challenging. It's challenging, to say the least. And so that's a possibility there of what is going on. We're going back to John chapter 1 now. If you have thoughts or comments, you're welcome to stop me. I know I've kind of been going through this. Um, in, in John chapter 1, As we mentioned already, we see that he was searching for the Messiah. Verse 45, again, lets us know that both Philip and Nathaniel are students of the law. Because they were able to discuss that. They were able to discuss that matter. They were able to discuss that, you know, Moses talked about him. The prophets talked about him. Um... We see him searching for the Messiah. We see him, when, when Jesus said in verse 48, he said, and before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now there's, 
I don't know if there's a way to know for sure what he was doing. I would like to think that maybe that was his time of study or meditation or prayer or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, but uh, I think it's a, at least a possibility. Because when you go back and you read this chapter, you see, again, that they were out in the wilderness, or, or at least these other disciples were out in the wilderness as disciples of John the Baptizer following. It's possible that all of them were as well uh, followers of John the Baptizer. You, you see this, this, this search for truth, this thirst for knowledge uh, in this man. But what we're going to hang on, of course, when you think about Nathaniel, when you think about his life, when you think about how he'll forever be remembered, that's in verse 47, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Some translations say in whom is no guile. Um, he was a man of his word. He was a genuine seeker of God and truth. Doesn't mean he was perfect. None of the apostles were. And, you know, that's one thing that uh, we can certainly appreciate about the Holy Spirit inspiring these gospel writers is to let us know about their imperfection. Eric Lyons did an excellent job last Wednesday night in presenting that of how we can know the Bible is from God. And, you know, that's a point that he stayed on for most of the night. You know, the air is human, but the Bible, you know, will reveal some of the great people and the errors that they made. Uh, and not, uh, not leaving that. Well, I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that um, not that they messed up, but that I can realize when I mess up that it's possible to get back up, repent, continue going. Well, it's not to say that this man was a perfect man or a sinless man in any way, but it is a great description about this man. Of, um, you know, no deceit, no decoy, uh, decoy and no, not trying to, uh, Strong's would use words like um, not a decoy or a trick or to bait. Um, when, when, when you think about this man who, and this is Jesus. This is, this is Jesus describing him again. When you, when you think about, sometimes you have to ask, how does God see me? How does God view me? What, 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 what does God think about the decisions I'm making? What does God think about my words? What does God think about my thoughts? This is Jesus who says, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Some of the thoughts that I gave in your notes. By birth, Nathaniel was an Israelite. Of course, that means he was a descendant of Abraham. And the Israelites, the, 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 the religious leaders of the day, namely the Pharisees, they loved to let people know that they were descendants of Abraham, did they not? Are you greater than our father Abraham? I mean, they loved that because they, it was all wrapped up into that. But Nathaniel was different than those he was a descendant of Abraham, this is true, but Jesus said an Israelite indeed, or an Israelite truly. Uh, Jesus is talking about the spiritual nature of Nathaniel. Yes, to be born into that family was, was, was part of it, um, but, or uh, as a descendant of Abraham, I should say, but he's talking about the, the, the spiritual nature of Nathaniel, one who is truly seeking, one who is truly searching, one who is truly trying to live right, okay? Um, Notice some notes I gave you. Look to Romans chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Romans chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. He was sincerely seeking to follow God's will. Romans chapter 9 and verse 6. But it is not the word of God, but if it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel, nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham. But in Isaac your seed shall be called. Look at the Romans chapter 2, verses 28 29. Romans 2, 28 29. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. He is a Jew who is one inwardly. Circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit, not the letter whose praise is not from men but from God. Now you know this <clears throat> circumcision for the Jews, the descendants of Abraham, goes all the way back to what, Genesis um, 13, I think, maybe is the first mention of it. Then you see it again in chapter 17. Um, then, of course, it's in the law of Moses. Uh, but, you know, what, um, what, what Paul is uh, saying here, 
Yes, it's important to keep the commands of God. Jesus did, his, his parents did, Luke chapter 2, had him circumcised on the eighth day. But it's, it's, it's more than just going through the motions. It's, it's not enough to just go through the motions. It's not enough just to say circumcised. It's not enough just to say I'm a descendant of Abraham. And, and I think what Jesus is saying here about Nathaniel is here's one who's truly trying to do what is right. Here's one who is truly uh, trying to be my servant. This is not in your notes, but go to, I think it's Ephesians. Let me check. Ephesians 2. I'll jot this down in, in your notes. Ephesians 2, 11 through 13 is similar, but that's not what I'm looking for. Colossians 2. Ephesians and Colossians are similar books, saying much of the same thing. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11 beginning. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11 beginning. When we think about Nathaniel and Jesus said, here's an Israelite in whom... Uh, Indeed, in whom is no deceit or no guile, uh, you know, it's, it's about the heart. It's about who you are, that which God knows. Verse 11, in Jesus you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Now, we know today uh, circumcision is no longer it died when Jesus died on the cross. Um, but we know this verse, Ephesians 2 and elsewhere, it's baptism is how we get into the body of Christ, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. I, I think, you know, we have to ask ourselves a similar question that we're discussing is, am I a Christian indeed in whom there is no deceit, in whom there is no God? Or do I base everything on I was baptized? And there's nothing else expected of me. You've heard me say before, I'm concerned that I think some of our brethren based our salvation on what I call the big three. I've been baptized. We don't use a piano. I take the Lord's Supper. My ticket's punched. I'm going to heaven. That's all God wants from me. So much more. He wants your life. He wants your everything. Not going to be perfect, but he wants you to strive for it. He wants your faithfulness. He wants you to get up and repent when you fail. He's going to help you through it. He understands when we do it. But he does not want us to limit it to, I checked off three or four outward appearances, so everything's going to be good between me and my Lord on Judgment Day. Can we say today that we are Christians indeed, Christians truly, Christians in whom there is no deceit? Or no guile. Well, um, thank you so much for being here. I, I thought we had a few more minutes, but uh, thank you for being here. Um, we'll have a break. We'll pick up next week with the last part on Bartholomew or Nathaniel.